Hello everyone, this is Chidanand from Crux Info Tech NG. Welcome to this tutorial on Minikube setup on Windows machine using VirtualBox. Now before doing the setup, a little important to understand what is Minikube, why would somebody need to install it and what does this Minikube emulate. So Minikube is nothing but a single node Kubernetes cluster. So if at all you were to spin up an actual Kubernetes cluster, you would need a minimum of uh, three virtual machines. I'm talking about a proper uh, Kubernetes installation, not any scaled down version of this. So there would be a requirement to at least spin up three Linux machines and then do some sort of a complicated setup on this and then install the actual Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you're a developer, who is developing some sort of microservices or some components of the microservices which has to be tested on an actual Kubernetes cluster even before deploying it on a real Kubernetes cluster. How would you set up your development environment? What tool that you would want to use in order to spin up a kind of a small emulator for your actual Kubernetes cluster? So that is where Minikube comes into play. So when we talk about the single node Kubernetes clusters, there are a couple of uh, tools. Minikube stands out as one of the oldest uh, particular tool that is available, very stable in recent times. And there's also another tool called Kind. There are a bunch of other tools as well, but these two are very, very popular. Now in this setup, I will show you how Minikube can be installed and configured to run on a Windows machine. All that Minikube needs is some sort of an hypervisor at the back end. So I'll demonstrate how to set up a Minikube cluster or a single node Minikube um, setup on a Windows machine using Oracle VirtualBox, which is the um, hypervisor tool that I'm going to use. If we go through the documentation of Minikube, if at all I were to say, um, well, I were to download the version of Minikube, just search for Minikube releases. There are um, different versions of the builds or the binaries or the installations that is available uh, for uh, various kinds of operating system. So if you are on Windows, there is a simple exe file that you can download. Minikube Windows AMD64.exe. So whatever version of Minikube that you would want to download, all that you got to do is download this and put it on the path. So in my local machine, I have a, I have a folder called Minikube. C folder and Minikube. Now this is a folder where I have dropped the Minikube executable that I have downloaded. Also, I have put this particular folder both in the path as well as in one of the environmental variables. Um, the environmental variable name is called minikube underscore o. So this is a folder which, uh, under which all the binaries, all the configurations, all the VMs that spin up as minikube, everything will be saved in this folder. So I've set this to a C minikube folder. It could be any folder of your choice, but this makes more sense for me. So I downloaded the binary out there. I have given an environment variable, which is a preset variable called minikube underscore home, which points to this particular folder. Apart from this, in order to work, work with minikube or any other Kubernetes version, you would need something called as a kubectl. Kubectl or cutl, as they call it, this is also a binary, the binary which uh, can be downloaded and put in any particular folder. Now install kubectl on Windows, uh, you will find the binaries. All right, so download whatever version of uh, kubectl that you want. There is a list of um, supported versions of Kubernetes along with the supported versions of kubectl cutl that you would want to uh, use. So I'm planning to use the latest version of um, Minikube plus the latest version of uh, cutl with the latest version of uh, Kubernetes, which is 1.29.x, whatever is the latest version. So I downloaded the latest version of kubectl, put it in a folder 
put that on the path. So if at all I open up any particular um, uh, command prompt and I just say kubectl and uh, version, <clears throat> it picks up the binary that is present. And okay, this is trying to go to the server as well. Uh, if at all I just say client, kubectl version double hyphen client. And this is the version of uh, kubectl that I have downloaded and put it on my path. Apart from these things, there's another small prerequisite for Minikube. So if you say Minikube um, start or documentation, or let me just search for Minikube. Yeah, Minikube documentation. This gives you um, the prerequisites for Minikube. So if you were to run Minikube on any particular uh, virtual machine, uh, you need at least two CPUs and two GB of free space and 20 GB of uh, disk space. Okay. Also, one of the requirement is that it needs some sort of a virtual uh, machine manager. It needs either Docker or HyperKit, Hypervisor or VirtualBox. So I have an Oracle VirtualBox which is already uh, installed on my machine. Let me check the version of uh, virtual box that I have. Now again, um, this could be any version, but this is the version that I have. This is again a free binary that can be downloaded and installed. And this has got nothing to do with uh, Minikube per se directly, but this is a tool that anybody would want to use in case you want to spin up multiple VMs on your machine. So Oracle virtual box is what I have downloaded and installed on my machine. Now I'm all set to go ahead and start my Minikube. And if you take a look at the documentation of Minikube, it's got a lot of information about how to spin up your cluster with a specific driver, with a specific configuration, which requires a particular version of Kubernetes in case if that is your um, actual requirement. You can take a look at this documentation where um, all the configurable items in terms of CPU, memory, uh, the hypervisor, the kind of toolkits that you would want to enable, everything is put out. I'm going to start a very, very simple Minikube with the latest version of Kubernetes. I already have that written as a small uh, batch file. So let me just take a look at what is there in this batch file. Um, okay, Minikube start hyphen hyphen VM driver equal to virtual box. Just because I have uh, virtual box as my VM driver. That is why this particular stuff. Um, I remember, you know, when I was running this earlier, I was running into some issues, which I tried to debug. And, uh, you know, this is not a, a kind of mandatory requirement, but this is what works for me. So only one line, which I can start from a particular command prompt. If I want a specific version of Kubernetes, I can add hyphen hyphen Kubernetes version uh, and uh, specify which version of Kubernetes do I need on my cluster. Now I want the default, whatever is the latest and greatest. Um, so this batch file is sufficient for me. So if at all, I open up a command prompt and uh, go to the Minikube folder. And there is this start minikube.bat. All right, now Minikube will spin up a small virtual machine using the virtual box and download a particular image and then spin it up. This particular step would take some time. So I would pause the video and uh, come back once um, my Minikube setup is ready. It took some time for my Minikube to get uh, downloaded or rather for my Minikube to pull a new image which has got a bunch of pre-bundled Kubernetes with uh, Docker and all that part in it, if you see the logs. Also, in case something goes bad, you can always have, you can troubleshoot by specifying a verbose level of debugging. So if at all you see at least hyphen hyphen v2, whatever is the minikube start command, hyphen hyphen verbose equal to two, you will see a lot of logs. Also, in case you start your virtual box, you will find one machine running. Now this is nothing but the 
uh, virtualbox has downloaded an image of um, you know kubernetes along with all the preset compiled stuff out there any log if there's anything that is not working well it is all kind of shown out here in this log as well okay so now my mini cube cluster is up and running and my kubectl commands if at all i say k uh, get nodes uh, i have set the alias as k equal to kubectl so i can run uh, uh, instead of kubectl i can run just k you see my kubernetes is up and running uh, i can say mini cube status my mini cube is also up and running k get pod hyphen a get me all the pods um you know that is running um so pretty much my cluster is uh, my single node cluster is running and in case i want to i can always spin up a particular part so let me just quickly uh, do that k run my hyphen pod hyphen hyphen image uh, busy box uh, hyphen hyphen command um, sh minus c sleep for one day or um, um, what should I say? Um, echo hello world and then sleep for one day. Double code. All right. So k get pod. All right. My pod is coming up. K describe pod. My pod. All right, it is pulling this image. So K get pod. All right, my pod is running K logs of my pod. As simple as that. Now, whatever you would want to try on your actual Kubernetes cluster, and 90% of that or 95% of that would exactly run in, in a similar fashion out here in Minikube. Maybe in the subsequent um, tutorials, I'll also show you how to enable lots and lots of add-ons so mini cube add-ons list it's got a lot of add-ons we can have the dashboard we can have um, ingress controllers uh, we can have um, uh, the metric server which will show you the uh, cpu and the memory utilization of a running pod and stuff like that a lot of add-ons are there mini cube is pretty powerful uh, but configuring it and running it is um, as simple as this now Assuming that you everything is working well for you, but later down the line something goes bad, your Minikube crashes or gets into some bad state, or you would want to upgrade Minikube, or you want to upgrade the cluster to some other version of Kubernetes, you want to get rid of Minikube. Okay, so one of the uh, ways of doing that is first stop your Minikube. And this happens very often where uh, you know Minikube crashes or you get into a little bit of a bad state where you're not able to start it and you're not able to figure out. What happens earlier this used to happen a lot these days minikube is a lot more stable than that okay once you stop minikube uh, just say minikube uh, delete all right so now this deletes everything that was there in your cluster also it's always a best practice to go to your minikube folder and uh, there is a dot uh, in, in this minikube dot minikube uh, all the configurations with the previous run of minikube is present so better to go ahead and delete this particular folder also one of the other things to do is go to your home folder and there is a dot cube folder which has got all the configurations uh, uh, for which your mini cube was configured always better to go and delete this folder as well okay now if you come to oracle virtual box you'll not even find any of the old image that existed so you can pull another version of kubernetes and run it you know based on the steps that i provided earlier i hope um, you found this uh, tutorial informative and um, as usual if you run into some issues um, kindly leave me a message and i'll try to address it as soon as i can thank you so much for stopping by and watching my channel if you find the information in my channel informative kindly subscribe to my channel as well thank you so much